After a few days road tripping the countryside of Armenia, it was time to finish in the nation's capital, Yerevan. Tree lined streets led the way to cute cafes, vibrant art galleries, metropolitan museums, and majestic monuments, all under the watchful eye of Mount Ararat. I was fortunate to visit on the weekend, as the city was alive with vintage markets and buzzing with activities. I was amazed at how much I fell in love with this small city. And here's how it went. Good morning, guys, and welcome to Yerevan, Armenia. I've just finished a three-day road trip around the countryside of Armenia, and I'm finishing up here in the capital city for a couple days this weekend. I loved the countryside, beautiful hills, beautiful monasteries. Armenia's kind of tucked away in this like in between Europe and Asia. It's in between Turkey, Iran, Azerbaijan, and Georgia. But so far Yerevan has more of like a European feel than anything else. It has these beautiful tree-lined streets. It has these nice like street side cafes, cute little bars, quaint architecture, great walking streets. The city is only a just over a million people so it's just very walkable very manageable city you can just easily walk around to most of the major sites here it was also a former soviet republic so you have a lot of this like brutalist soviet architecture these very heavy very dense buildings um, so there's gonna be some cool architecture some cool lots of cool museums um, really interesting monuments so yeah, I'm excited to kind of explore the city a little, little bit with you guys the next two days. So this morning I'm starting off right in the center of Yerevan in the Republic Square, which is right in the, in the city center and there's this big oval roundabout surrounded by these beautiful majestic buildings. You have a couple government buildings, you have a national museum, you have some hotels and it has some of the buildings here have this like pinkish stone and some yellow stone. We have like a big clock tower and then right next to the roundabout here we have this this nice fountain right in front of the museum and at night the fountain is lit up they play some music and it's a nice place to come and, and people will be gathered here at night so it's kind of the central gathering area of Yerevan we have some nice like flower gardens along the side of the fountains and yeah some cool architecture so Anyways, we're gonna start here in Republic Square, then there's this long walking street that kind of cuts diagonally right through the city, heading towards the Cascade, which is one of the most prominent features here. So let's head to the walking street. We'll walk down that, see a couple buildings along the way, and head towards the Cascade. So just a block from the Republic Square is Northern Avenue, which is this diagonal street that just kind of cuts right through the city from Republic Square all the way to the Cascade, passing the National Opera House. And it's this really nice just walking street. There's no cars, it's pedestrian only, and there's some nice shops, some nice hotels, restaurants, cafes. So let's uh, cut across the city through Northern Ave and keep heading northwest here. Partway down Northern Avenue, the street kind of opens up into this really big plaza that's all paved and right in the middle we have the this round circular building that's the National Opera and Ballet Theater of Armenia and it was built in the 1930s and it's this big stone structure, has these beautiful like arched windows and then along the middle here we have some like detailing of some faces and some Armenian motifs and it's yeah just this beautiful stone building has this nice rounded curved look to it and it, it's like a stately piece right in the center of Northern Avenue here as you're cutting across the city. So yeah let's uh, check out some of the details on this building and then we'll keep heading up Northern Avenue to the Cascades. And just surrounding the theater here, we just have this open park with a lot of green areas, some cafes, some little like outdoor restaurants and seating areas. 
and yeah it just has this very open kind of quiet feel right in the middle right in the heart of the city just made it to the base of the Cascade Complex here, which is one of the most iconic sites here in Yerevan. And at the base here, there's this nice little like garden area. There's all these like funky statues. There's these cute little European style cafes lined along the gardens and the park here. And then at the end of the park, we just have the Cascade Complex, which is this amazing like stone steps that go up the side of the hill of Yerevan here. And as you enter the park here, you have a statue of Alexander Tamanyan, who is one of the main architects of Yerevan and kind of conceptualized the idea of the Cascade Complex, although it wasn't started until the 80s when the Soviets started to build the Cascade Complex. But then the earthquake in 1988 kind of paused construction for a while, and it wasn't until the early 2000s that the Cascade Complex was finally completed. So now it's just this beautiful, nice garden area. And then so we can climb up the stairs here. And as you're climbing up, there's all of these like art galleries, there's statues, there's fountains, there's a little waterfall that cascades down it. And as you keep going up, there's you can climb up the stairs, but there's also some escalators on the inside that can take you up to the top. And at the top, there's a monument and then you also get these beautiful views looking over all of Yerevan. So yeah, let's uh, head up the Cascade Complex here. As you're ascending the cascade here, every level there kind of like opens up this little courtyard area. We have a nice little garden. We have these fountains and then above all of the fountains you just have these amazing carvings. We have these really cool statues and then again under the stairs there's actually an escalator and there's all of these indoor galleries that you can check out that are most of them are free so you can either climb up the stairs on the outside or you can go inside check out the gallery and take the escalators inside so i'll just show you i'll take you guys in one of the galleries here and then show you guys the escalators that can take you up to the top have one more set of stairs to make it all the way to the top of the cascade but we're starting to get this really nice elevated view of the city. So I have just made it all the way to the top of the cascade complex here and we have this amazing view looking over all of the main downtown of Yerevan. Unfortunately, it's a little bit foggy and cloudy this morning or else you'd be able to see Mount Ararat and Little Ararat way off in the distance. Um, but yeah, today it's gonna be cloudy and tomorrow's gonna be cloudy, so I don't think I'm gonna get that view. But yeah, you just have this nice view overlooking all of the city and just, yeah, very cool complex coming up here. So many cool statues and artwork and sculptures. And, and then you have all of these like plant beds that have like plants and bushes all along the top here. So really cool little feature here and a cool way to climb this hill overlooking Yerevan. So there's actually some construction here, but you can go around it. And then there's this uh, memorial to Soviet Armenia that has this really tall statue. Um, so you can 
go around the construction here and go check out that statue. Just come up the hill a little bit from the Cascade to the 50th anniversary memorial monument of Soviet rule in Armenia. And it was completed in 1967 and it's this 65 meter high obelisk that has a crown on the top that symbolizes some old Armenian heritage here. This monument and this like viewing platform is just like most post-soviet feeling monument it's just this concrete slab it's like half finished very brutalist monument but from up here we have this viewing platform that gets you up a little bit higher than the cascade that'll give us some nice views overlooking all of Yerevan so let's head over here and check out the views Basically the same views that you get at the, cas the top of the Cascade Park, you're just up a little bit higher. And then from here you can also look over and see Victory Park and Mother Armenia, this massive statue of this woman that's personifying Armenia that just kind of like towers over the city. So I think I'm going to head back down the Cascade Park, grab some lunch, and then we'll keep exploring Yerevan. So let's head back down. This region of the world, Armenian Georgian food is some of my favorite. The kachapuri, this like boat shaped bread with egg and cheese in it, and dipping it into like a chicken curry is so good. So, anyways, we're gonna keep exploring downtown Yerevan a little bit. And just a couple blocks from the Cascade Park is the Katog Hike Church, which is one of the oldest churches here in Yerevan. It's from the 12th century AD. And it's actually like a really small little church here. And then in the 16, 1700s, there was this larger church that was built right next to it. Let's uh, head in and check out the oldest church here in Yedemont. So that was the oldest church here in Yerevan. I was a little bit mistaken. So it was, there was a 17th century church that was kind of built around it. But then in the last couple hundred years during some of the earthquakes, the older church was falling apart. And during the Soviet era, they were taking down the old church and they found the remains of this old 12th century church that was kind of built within the the 17th century church and then the newer church behind me is just built within the last 100 years so it's a much more modern Armenian church anyways from here I'm gonna walk down one of these nice city streets back towards Republic Square and near Republic Square there's the Vernissage Market which on the weekends is like an old thrift and antique shop so it'll be cool to check out some old Armenian arts and crafts and check out like a cool weekend market here so Anyway, it's gonna walk down this street. There should be a lot of cool cafes and some cool architecture along the way as we head back towards Republic Square. I've just made it back towards Republic Square here and just Right next to Republic Square is this long, green, grassy park called Vernissage. And on the weekends, they should have a 
bit of like a thrift and antique market here on the other side of the park. So let's walk through the park and see if they're doing the market today. I've just made it to the Vernissage antique and thrift market here and it's it's actually quite big it takes up like half of this park here and this long row of different market stalls and you have a lot of different like crafts you have Armenian souvenirs but then you have like antiques antique jewelry antique coins antique pins and there's little cafes and then you also have these like really cool old Persian rugs on the side here so those are really cool to check out really cool patterns and textures so yeah let's just peruse the market here browse around a little bit and see what we can find the Vernissage Antique Market and if you're ever here on the weekend I definitely recommend coming Saturday or Sunday and checking that out if you like antiques and old shops and just checking out lots of cool things like there were like old cameras they had like leather goods and rugs antiques crafts a bunch of cool stuff so but anyways that park kind of takes you across town to the outer edge of the old town here and just on the other side of the main road is the St. Gregory the Illuminator Cathedral, which is the largest church in Armenia. And it was actually only built and completed in 2001. So it's going to be this big, modern Armenian Christian church. So let's head over across the street and check it out. just come up to the Gregory the Illuminator Cathedral which again is a very modern Armenian church here and it is pretty big there's so many different like domes and it has this like beautiful yellow stone to it and then these nice clean curved archways and just has a very modern clean simple but elegant look to it there's not so much uh, like intricate design to it but more of like this kind of bold carvings that have like the doors and a modern simple elegance to them so yeah let's uh, head into this church and see the biggest church here in Armenia St. Gregory the Illuminators Cathedral here, the largest church in Armenia. And again, just on the outskirts of the downtown of Yerevan here. And you go in and there's a couple, the first room you enter has this tall domed ceiling and there's this little like altar and these lamps. And then you go into the main part of the cathedral here and just this massive cavernous space and pretty minimally designed. You have again, these nice, smooth archways and then this massive chandelier that just hangs over the congregation there so yeah beautiful but simple very has a very modern take on the armenian orthodox churches so anyways i'm gonna keep exploring out of the downtown here a little bit just a few blocks from here is the gum market which is this like food and bread market where they make and sell some famous Armenian bread. So let's head down here a couple blocks that way and we'll be to the gum market. As 
because I've just entered the gum market here and it's this big kind of open warehouse kind of feel and there's a bunch of dried fruits and nuts and they have some wines on the side there there's a fruit and vegetable section and then over here to the left is where they're making the lavash which is a very traditional Armenian bread it's a thin flat bread and has a bit of like a sourdough taste to it so over here you can see a bunch of the lavash and you can see them making some of it on the side here but kind of just very cool local like farmers type feel market so I'm gonna walk around check out a lot of the products that they're selling here and yeah see what they have <laughs> So that was the gum market here and yeah just a cool place to come and get a little taste of the local life and just some of the yeah the fruits and the nuts that are native to here in Armenia and learning a little bit about the how they make the bread there so anyways that's about it for my first day here in Yerevan there's a couple other things that I want to do tomorrow but they're on the other side of the old town checking out the mosque and the genocide memorial up on the hill and just a couple other things. So, but it's Saturday afternoon and tonight is museum night here in Yerevan. So a lot of the museums and stuff are, will be free. So you can enter a lot of the museums in the downtown area. So I'm gonna be hanging out with a few friends and checking out some of the museums here. So I'll show you guys the inside of a few of those museums. But besides that, I'll see you guys tomorrow when we explore the other side of Yerevan and a couple other things here. So yeah, we'll see you later and then we'll see you tomorrow. second day here in Yerevan and yeah last night it was actually museum night here so a lot of the art museums and some of the history museums were all free so met up with some friends and we went to actually the National Museum which is right in the center of Republic Square here and then we went to a couple other modern museums anyways this morning's my last day here in Armenia before I head off to Cyprus later tonight and there's just a couple more things I wanted to check out in the city here. So I'm gonna head to the western side of the city here. And one of the only remaining mosques is here. And then we have the Armenian Genocide Memorial up on the hill overlooking the city. So it's a nice quiet Sunday morning right now. So let's wander towards the Blue Mosque. western side of downtown Yerevan, just a few blocks from the Republic Square, is the Blue Mosque, which was built in the 18th century. And Armenia's obviously mostly been a Christian nation since 300 AD, but having a border with Iran, there were a lot of Iranians here. And so in the 18th century, this 
this was the mosque that was built it was the largest mosque and at the time there were eight mosques and this is the last functioning house of worship here for Muslims in the city of Yerevan. Yeah, and so you walk in off of this main street and there's this nice little quiet courtyard, a little bit of a rose garden, and then at the one end you just have this nice blue dome, um, a couple minarets, and there's just all of this like beautiful blue and yellow tiling and mosaics um, along the front and along some of the walls of this courtyard here. So. Let's head over and get a closer look at the mosque and then see if we can go inside to see the inside of the mosque. That's the Blue Mosque, the only mosque here in Yerevan. And just, yeah, very cool detailed tiling on the outside here. And the blue dome is just like this nice bright blue color that has some really interesting designs and tiling on it. And yeah, it's just kind of like tucked away in this little neighborhood of downtown Yerevan. Anyways, gonna head back out to the city and I'm gonna walk a little bit out of downtown over this gorge here and then up the hill to the Armenian Genocide Memorial, which is just outside the city a little bit, up on a hill, so we'll have some nice views up there and some really just interesting history and a place for reflection. So let's head out and head to the memorial. As you're kind of leaving this inner circle of the downtown Yerevan, there's the Hrazdin Gorge, which is this river that kind of just cuts through the edge of town, separating the downtown from this other district over here, where I'm gonna be heading up um, over that hill to the memorial on the other side of the stadium. But down in the gorge there, there's some cool little like walking paths. It's just this nice little green area with a little canal. But we're going to head over the bridge here, over the Hrazdin Gorge, and head to the other side to go up the hill to the memorial. So let's keep walking. on my way along the gorge here to the memorial and you're going by this huge stadium that has this like really colorful interior and these massive cement blocks and I guess on the weekends they have the Hrazden flea market here so right underneath the stadium here and in the parking lot you just have a bunch of old cars you have old CDs old magazines old cameras vintage clothing and yeah it's just like this big like garage sale flea market kind of feel here on the weekend so very fun place to just browse around for a bunch of old stuff and some vintage, some antiques, some old clothing, just there's everything here. So yeah, I'm just gonna walk around, peruse this market a little bit and then that's right under the stadium and then we'll head, keep heading up to the memorial up on the hill. Super cool market. I love being here on the weekend and just seeing all these cool weekend markets. But it was just one of those markets where it's just so much useless junk and it, like there's cool antiques and I'm sure there's like cool, one of those places where you can find some like true hidden gems in there. But so much of it's just like, you know, useless junk. And I always just wonder how they get all of that stuff there. Like there's just piles and piles and piles of stuff and I just don't understand how it all gets set up and everything. But just up this hill here, we have a little bit more of a hike and then we'll be up to 
the Armenian Genocide Memorial. So let's keep going. So I've just made it up the hill here to the Armenian Genocide Memorial and I'm not so good with history and some of the facts here but during World War I when the Ottomans were taking over this area over 1.2 million Armenians lost their lives in these death marches through the Syrian desert and so this memorial up here is to remember those 1 million Armenians that lost their lives during this time and so we have a 44 foot high spire which represents the rebirth of the armenians and then in the front here we have 12 concrete slabs that kind of make this circle that's around an eternal flame and the 12 slabs represent the 12 lost provinces that the armenians lost during the war there and during the ottoman takeover so you can go down into the 12 slabs here and in the middle there's an eternal flame and there's a bunch of roses around it and it's a very beautiful experience just walking in there. Everything else goes quiet and you can just hear this opera singing just faintly from the center and it's just, yeah, has a feeling to it. So, And then up here there's also an Armenian Genocide Museum that you can go in and learn a little bit more about the history of the genocide of the Armenian people. Very somber kind of place up here, but you're up on this hill just outside the city, so you have some really nice views looking back over Yerevan and the surrounding Armenian countryside. And so yeah, I'm just gonna walk around in remembrance of the Armenians up here and enjoy some of the views. Just on the other side of the park from the spire in the 12 slab memorial is the Armenian Genocide Museum. And it's actually free to come down here and enter it and see some of the exhibits. So I'm gonna head down the stairs and yeah, just walk around. I don't have a lot of time, unfortunately, and I'm sure there's like, it's one of those museums where you could spend tons of time just learning about the history and seeing a lot of these old Armenian artifacts. But yeah, so, but let's head in at least for a little bit and just check out the museum. had about 45 minutes to kind of cruise through that museum but very impressive exhibit just beautiful old photographs and artifacts and just information it kind of takes you step by step through just this timeline of what happened with the Armenian genocide and some of the lead up to it and the aftermath of it and just about the Armenian like diaspora now and yeah, just very impressive, very educational, and and even touched on some of the other genocides that have happened in the last 100 years. And it's just, I mean, everyone knows about the World War II and the Jewish genocide, but I have to admit that I really did not know much about the Armenian genocide. And yeah, just very insightful and sad and sobering to learn about that and just to learn about it here in Yerevan. Unfortunately, I have to head back. I'm getting on a flight to Cyprus this afternoon. So I have to go pack up my stuff, check out of my hotel, and then, yeah. So, and that was about it for my two days here in Yerevan. Honestly, one of the most surprisingly cool cities that I've been to. 
on this trip. It's just not necessarily the most beautiful of cities, but it was just such a cool culture, such a cool vibe. Seems like just a very livable place. Everything was so accessible, so easy to get around. I just walked everywhere in the city and just such an artsy culture. So many cool shops and cafes, wine bars, and just really cool hip places to just hang out, meet the locals, and yeah, just, and then you're just surrounded here in Ar Armenia by so much beauty and everything's just so accessible in this country. With the road trip, it was just a couple hours from here and you're just in the beautiful mountains. And yeah, so very, very cool country. Very impressed with Yerevan. And yeah, really, definitely a place I wanna come back to. And again, being a livable place, I would love to just spend some time living here. Just seems like it'd be a very good place to be based for a little bit. So yeah, but anyways, that's it for Armenia. I'm off to Cyprus, so I'll see you guys in Cyprus.